Thank you for that. Today, I want to challenge your perception of the so-called developing world. That term, the developing world, it bugs me. When you think of the developing world, this is probably what you think of. You're one slide ahead there. Deep, grinding poverty, such as this. Overcrowding. Or perhaps you think of the struggle to simply survive. But what our notion of a developing country fails to capture is the true natural beauty of our entire planet. These words, developing country, they create an us and them mentality. You fail to see, actually, how similar we truly are. This notion seems to say that these countries lack culture or refinement according to our definitions of developed versus developing. This term developing doesn't tell us the whole story. So my name is Mikey. My parents are originally from Hong Kong, but I was born in Canada. I haven't lived there for about 10 years. I love travel. I love exploring the world. I love that tingly little feeling you get when you step out your door into a grand adventure. One day in my travels, I met someone very special. She was headed to Bangladesh to work as a volunteer. I decided to follow her, and as we've already heard, we have a 12-week-old child now, actually, which is amazing. So it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> but I'm a little bit sleepless at the moment, so forgive me if I wander off track or something like that. Um, as you might imagine, when we went to Bangladesh, our parents were a little bit worried because of stuff they read. Everything was extremely negative, but someone very famous said, be the change, and we thought those were pretty wise words, and we thought we were kind of awesome for following his advice. We took our cameras, and we saw things that would change our lives forever. But then we also met people who would show us a hospitality and a kindness we have long forgotten here in so-called civilized culture. This is Habu. He was a rickshaw puller. For someone with very little formal schooling, he was in fact incredibly intelligent. He simply lacked opportunity. We became friends, and I met thousands of people like Habu in Bangladesh, literally thousands, each of whom wanted to introduce us to their families and take us for a meal and just give us basic human kindness. That was it, just, just to be a guest. I learned that people in poverty don't measure wealth in material terms. They measure it in terms of generosity and kindness, richness of culture. In Bangladesh, hospitality means how much can I give my guests, not how much can I get from them. This realization really stunned me. It kind of changed the whole course of my life. Suddenly I was asking myself, what can I do to give back to the people of Bangladesh? And the answer became clear. It was to share the beauty of Bangladesh with the world, to share it with you. Bell and I started with a travel guidebook, now in its second edition. And as I researched the guidebook, I was experiencing so much beauty. It was the beauty of Bangladesh's monsoon. When the landscape is capped, these beautiful anvil-shaped clouds over the rivers. I went to the few precious, wild, natural places left in this country, in Bangladesh, including the Shondabans, which is the world's largest mangrove forest and home to the very, very, very endangered Royal Bengal Tiger. I learned how Buddhism's ancient roots are buried under the sand in Bangladesh, and there remains so much more to be discovered in these shifting sediments of the Ganges, which is the world's largest river delta. Finally, I was utterly flabbergasted by the strength and resilience I saw in the people of Bangladesh. These people face far more challenges than we do in their daily lives, but it makes them stronger and more creative. I learned how on the shifter, shifting river islands of the Jamuna Basin, thousands of people live and die by their creativity and their willingness to survive. I also discovered how climate change was potentially making these conditions much, much worse. Everywhere I went, I saw creativity and resilience, pride and culture. I experienced human connection through
through the incredible hospitality of Bangladeshi people. And I saw how little people actually need in order to live and, dare I say, be happy. Each day, people like these were inspiring me to look at my life completely differently. And I really struggled with this question. All of us have such opportunity. We get health care, we get education. And that makes us who we are. But these people didn't have those same opportunities, but they can make so much more out of it. And that's why I saw so much potential unfulfilled in Bangladesh. So ultimately, I was inspired enough to ask myself, what can I do to give back? And that's why I created this project, the Positive Light Photography Project. Crowdfunded, crowdsourced, and all the beautiful pictures are from this project. As Paul said, there was 130 photographs, or sorry, 130 photographers and 700 images. And for me, these amazing photographs totally confounded my notion of what is beautiful and where we, expect, where we expect to discover beauty. It was my hope that these images would encourage sustainable tourism. As we know, as you know very well here in Australia, tourism is a positive economic force when it's managed well. It can create jobs, it can promote cultural exchange, and it can protect nature. And to create this tourism, I needed to be able to share a positive story of Bangladesh with people like you a story you'd never seen before. If you've even heard of Bangladesh or even know where it is on the map, we didn't, oddly. This is a story of dignity, not despair, a story of human potential, not pity. How much potential, you might ask? Well, in 2012, tourism, India, tourism in India represented an estimated 10% of its GDP. In Bangladesh, it's about 4%. That means if Bangladesh was on par with India, it would create $6 billion more in tourism income. You know what the crazy thing is? $6 billion is more than any aid and development project combined in Bangladesh from all the countries around the world that give aid. Bangladeshi people, people like Habu, deserve this opportunity to participate in the world's tourism market. By promoting a positive image of Bangladeshi people, I believe the country could reap the benefits of positive tourism. I had gone to Bangladesh to create change, but in the end, Bangladesh changed me. And I realized that poverty and inequality are just human creations. They're not just something that's there. We can change it. And when we speak in terms of human potential, I believe we all have great power to create a better future. Thank you.